A cleric named Johannes Warius of Poitou gives in full the confession of Pierre Bourgo, otherwise called Great Peter, and of Michael Verding. The prisoners, who were accused of wicked practices in December 1521, believed they had been transformed into wolves. About 19 years before Pierre's arrest at Pouligny, a dreadful storm occurred, which scattered the flock of sheep of which he was shepherd, and while he went far afield to search for them, he met three black horsemen, one of whom said to him, where are you going, my friend? You appear to be in trouble. Pierre told him that he was seeking his sheep, and the horsemen bade him take courage, saying that if he would only have faith, his master would protect the straying sheep and see that no harm came to them. Pierre thanked him and promised to meet him again in the same place a few days later. Soon afterwards, he found the stray sheep. The black horsemen at their second meeting told Pierre that he served the devil, and Pierre agreed to do likewise if he promised him protection for his flock. Then the devil's servant made him renounce God, the Virgin Mary, and all the saints of paradise, his baptism and the tenets of Christianity. Pierre swore that he would do so and kissed the horseman's left hand, which was as black as ink and felt stone cold. Then he knelt down and took an oath of allegiance to the devil and the horseman forbade him thenceforth to repeat the Apostles' Creed. For two years, Pierre remained in the service of the evil one, and during that time, he never entered a church until mass was over, or at least until after the holy water had been sprinkled. Meanwhile, his flock was kept in perfect safety, and this sense of security made him so indifferent about the devil that he began to go to church again and to say the creed. This went on for eight or nine years, when he was told by one Michael Verding that he must once more render obedience to the evil one, his master. In return for his homage, Pierre was told that he would receive a sum of money. Michael led him one evening to a clearing in the woods at Chastel Chalon, where many strangers were dancing. Each performer held in his hand a green torch, which emitted a blue flame. Michael told Pierre to bestir himself, and that then he would receive payment. So Pierre threw off his clothes and Michael smeared his body with an ointment which he carried. Pierre believed that he had been transformed into a wolf and was horrified to find that he had four paws and a thick pelt. He found himself able to run with the speed of the wind. Michael had also made use of the salve and had become equally agile. After an hour or two, they resumed human shape, their respective masters giving them another salve for this purpose. After this experience, Pierre complained that he felt utterly weary, and his master told him that was of no consequence and that he would be speedily restored to his usual state of health. Pierre was often transformed into a werewolf after this first attempt, and on one occasion, he fell upon a boy of seven with the intention of killing and eating him, but the child screamed so loudly that he beat a hasty retreat to the spot where his clothes lay in a heap rubbed himself hurriedly with the ointment and resumed human form to escape capture. Another time, Michael and he killed an old woman who was gathering peas, and one day, whilst in the shape of wolves, they devoured the whole of a little girl, except for one arm, and Michael said her flesh tasted excellent, although it apparently gave Pierre indigestion. They confessed also to strangling a young woman whose blood they drank. Among other disgusting crimes, Pierre murdered a girl of eight in a garden by cracking her neck between his jaws, and he killed a goat near to the farm of one Master Pierre Le Rougen, first by setting on it with his teeth and then by gashing its throat with a knife. The latter operation leads to the belief that he had resumed his ordinary shape at the time. A peculiar point worth noticing about the case of Michael and Pierre was that the former was able to transform himself at any moment with his clothes on, while the latter had to strip and rub in ointment to achieve the same result. At the time of his confession, Pierre declared that he could not recollect where the wolf's fur went to when he became human again. He also deposed that an ash-colored powder was given to him, which he rubbed upon his arms and left hand, and thus caused the death of every animal he touched. Here there would seem to be some discrepancy, for he declared that in many instances he strangled, bit, or wounded his victims. The two werewolves were burned at the stake.